Okay, I'm Artie Fahey, and he's not. <laughs> okay, I'm Artie Fahey. And I'm Jack Ellis. And he really is, and uh, <laughs> we're up here. This is a little bit different clinic because this is actually going to be a uh, kind of a pre-clinic to the next clinic. A little discussion. Basically, we're going to talk about um, when we take a kit and if we're going to distress the kit or we're going to have it in a pristine shape. It's what we kind of talk about is why do we do those things. And you're just not talking about kids, Jack. Uh, well. You can yeah. scratch build things, yes. so it's okay, it's okay. Bottom line is uh, there's a lot of details that we add to our models. And it looks really cool, but is it necessary? And do you always want to do it? And if you do it, I mean, how far do you want to take it? Yeah, I, we, we, some people have a tendency to take it to a very high degree. And it all depends upon the time you're actually uh, you're modeling. I think that um, if you take a look at our airports today, which was our mode of transportation now, they're in pristine shape. Back then in the 50s, if you were modeling a station, you don't want to depress the station. That would have been the, the pristine uh, mode of transportation. So we're going to look at doing some other things, uh, maybe some older buildings in that era. Well, you know, we have two things that we always refer to, and these things don't come in the box. These things that are basically creatively based involve lifting boards, so boards look like they're falling off of structures, especially with the clapboard buildings, which most craftsmen uh, type kits are. And of course, many of you that scratch build, of course, use clapboard. Why not? What else would you use made out of wood? And the other thing is, do we put or do we not put nail holes? And if we do it, how much do we do? And where do we put the buildings that have them? and so on. So this is where we want to go with this discussion. The next part of this clinic, the very next one, you can click on the next one, is going to be actually how to do these things. But let's find out, do you really want to? If so. Yeah, we, we're, trying to, we're trying to get an effect of the building that we're, we're actually building. So if we want to make it a little old, a little more depressed, yeah, we will have some boards lifting, we will have some nail holes. But if you look at a house that's relatively pristine, you're not going to see the nail holes. So it all depends upon how you want to model that particular building. Well, you know, it's a great dramatic effect. And you know, it doesn't cost anything. So those are two good, two good reasons that maybe you should do it, Jack. Yeah, and the other option, the other option too, is, is we get into scale. Um, on an end scale, you've got to have a hard time seeing some of these things, lifted boards and nail holes. But when you get into maybe an O scale type of uh, structure, then you, you will see these things, and they do make a big, big difference. Well, subtle things are more subtle in N scale than they are in O scale. And of course, HO guys, which is most of you, you know, you ride the kind of comfortable middle, middle ground on that. Uh, the thing of it is, do you want to lift the, the uh, clapboards on the side of your building? And I'm going to tell you, my house is lifting on one side because it's on the south side of the building. The north side that doesn't get sun looks brand new, but the south side looks pretty beat up, so there's an approach right there. Oh yeah, that, there are buildings out there that things are lifting and things are, nail holes are showing, but I think you'll find out that at one out of every ten is probably in, in that kind of a degree. The other thing is where you want to place it on your layout or in your diorama. If you're going to be something that's right in the foreground, right in somebody's face, you're going to add a little more detail to that building anyway, where if it's in the background, you don't want too much detail, you want to have it a uh, a more plain building. You know, the problem is, as great as the techniques are that are involved in this part of the hobby, if you use them and use them and use them and use them, they kind of lose oh, the yeah. whole personality trait of introduce, introducing them in the first place. If every building has holes and lifted clapboards, all of a sudden it becomes the norm and not the exception to the norm. And there's a, there's a phrase that I've heard over the years, and I think it's a great phrase, when you overdo it, and you can, it's simply called fire trap modeling. So it depends, do you look at your layout in that respect, or do you look at it in a different respect, where some buildings are newer, and some are obviously older, or do we go the other way where just everything, but everything looks old and weathered? And if you do one or the other with all your buildings, you're going to end up with all the buildings looking the same. You're going to have no variety in your buildings. But nonetheless, we're going to go on to the next clinic and discuss a couple different approaches to doing this. And so stay tuned, and Jack and I will be back with lifting boards and introducing nail holes 
to uh, otherwise pristine models.